Welcome to the Idaho Fishing Report. Whether you are planning just a couple of hours or a full weekend of fishing, this is your one-stop place for all the information you need to plan your trip. It's all right here from weather forecasts and reservoir levels to the latest stocking reports and expert advice. And now the host of Idaho Fishing Report, Jeff Colors. Well, indeed, I am Jeff Colors, and welcome to the Good Boy Studios for this week's Idaho Fishing Report of August 25th, 2023. Man, we are rolling through this month. Uh, last full week of August coming up. The uh, dog days of summer hopefully are behind us. Maybe we've seen our last triple digits. We'll find out in the weather report. Of course, Jordan Rodriguez joins us for his Tightlines 208 hot tip of the week. I've got your reservoir level boat ramp information. I also have uh, your fishing tournaments and stocking reports. Everything's here. So sit back and relax. This is the Idaho Fishing Report. All right, before we get into that, just want to remind you of an event that I'm going to be doing this weekend at the ICCU Credit Union downtown uh, on Grove Street there. You want to check it out. The Treasure Valley Roller Derby will have, be having their grand finale. That's right, the last game of the year. This is a sanctioned bout, so make sure you check that out. This counts for their rankings for the season. So go out and support Treasure Valley Roller Derby. If you've never seen them, you want to come and check it out. The thrills, the hits, the glory. Doors open at 530. I'm on the microphone at 6. First whistle at 620. Come and check them out. All right, let's roll right into our regional update. We got a, a pretty good week coming up here. A little bit of rain I think we're going to see as we come in, but... Um, Let's start over in the Magic Valley, as we always do each and every week. Sunset there on Friday will be around 8.23 p.m. We'll get a little bit earlier each day after that. We're going to see 90 on Friday, partly cloudy. Um, and then you're going to get a bigger chance of rain on Saturday, 24% chance of rain, 87. And then Sunday, going to finish in those high 80s, but mostly sunny, only a 3% chance of rain, 7-mile-an-hour winds. That's your weekend. Now, into the first of next week, and this is going to be really important as we get back into the moon phase here in a little bit. You're going to understand this. But as we get into the first of next week, it's going to be gorgeous, just gorgeous. Uh, low to mid-90s the first of the week, low 80s towards the end of the week, no chance of rain. Winds are going to be pretty mild, a little bit chance on Tuesday and Wednesday, but not too bad. Over in the Treasure Valley, we'll start over in Bruno, Mountain Home Area, as we always do. Sunset there will be around 8.29 p.m. We're going to see mid-90s all weekend long over there. And uh, you're going to see a slight chance of rain on Saturday, but not as much as we're going to see in the Magic Valley. I think most of that's going to push up through Nevada into the uh, kind of that Magic Valley area. Treasure Valley looks pretty good. Uh, a slight chance of rain uh, most of the week. Going to see some stronger winds, like we said, again on Tuesday and Wednesday, but still not too bad. Uh, 16 mile an hour on Tuesday right now is the forecast as we're recording this on Wednesday. We're going to see almost 100 on Monday, and then it's going to go down from there mid-80s by the end of the week. Just going to be absolutely gorgeous. Man, I can't wait. Uh, for the end of this week, and we have some good news about that as well, too, uh, for some other things in the area. All right, over in Boise, sunset around 8.32 p.m. Again, the same thing, low 90s through the weekend, about a 15% chance of rain on Saturday, but most of the rest of it, single-digit single chances of rain. Winds again Tuesday and Wednesday, 12 to 13 mile an hour, not too gosh awful bad. We're going to see highs uh, in the upper 90s on Monday, mid-90s on Tuesday, and then in the 80s. Woo! Going to be happy over here in the Treasure Valley in Boise area come Wednesday and Thursday. It's going to be um, 80 on Wednesday, so it's going to be really nice, and we're going to enjoy that after having some dog days for sure. All right, over in the Cascade area, heading up at Double Nickel Sunset there, also around 8.32 p.m., uh, much lower temperatures, low 80s all weekend long. Mid 80s on Monday, low 80s on Tuesday, and then get ready for this, folks. 69 degrees on Wednesday, the 30th. So it's really going to cool off. Better chances of rain up there than anywhere else. 
Uh, we're going to see about 15% chance of rain Friday, Saturday. Sunday looks pretty good, mostly sunny. Monday looks pretty good. Uh, another chance of rain on Tuesday up to 20%. And after that, it's going to be really nice. Winds are calm. They usually are up that way. Don't have a whole lot of problem with winds up that way. All right. Shall we head over to the Snake River Reservoir area? Uh, head out there, 84 west towards Ontario. Sunset there will be around 8.36 p.m. Mountain Time. And um, we're gonna see we're gonna see temperatures in the upper 80s, low 90s all weekend, mid 90s on Monday, and then it's gonna dip down into the upper 80s on Tuesday, 78 on Wednesday. Again, seeing that cool weather coming through, that also means a chance of rain, but uh, not too bad. Tuesday, 19% chance of rain, 15% on Saturday. Your biggest chance of rain in the Snake River Reservoir is gonna be around 24% on Friday. And that is your regional update for weather. All right. It is my favorite episode every single week where we bring in the owner and creator of Tight Lines 208, Jordan Rodriguez. Jordan, how are you doing this week, my friend? I'm doing great, Jeff. Doing great, great, great. Uh, just got back from a backpacking trip in the mountains. Uh, always one of my favorite things to do is to go and visit these alpine lakes, these hidden gems we have uh, way up in the in the backcountry wilderness, and uh, it's always good for the soul. Oh, for sure, for sure. Getting away, you know, and, you know, this is a kind of a time of the year where people are finishing up. They're they're getting in those last fishing trips. I know I've got some dates circled on my calendar too. And the Alpine Lakes are some good ones that you can get away from some of the crowds. And hopefully I'm not giving away too much. So why don't we jump in to the Tight Lines 208 Hot Tip of the Week. Yes, yeah, so it's a, it's a real simple one this week, Jeff. The tip, the hot tip is to go fish an Alpine Lake. Um, if you've done it, then you should already know what I mean. Uh, perhaps you've forgotten because, uh, you know, the opportunities, it's not the easiest thing to do, uh, to go and fish a lot of these lakes. It does require some effort, some planning. Um, but if you've never done it before for those reasons or, or any others, maybe you're new to the area. Um, you know, maybe you weren't fully aware that these opportunities exist. But uh, they do exist, and every time I go, I'm just so happy that they that they do exist and that they uh, offer such a cool opportunity. Um, I'm not sure how many I've been to during my years in Idaho, but it's uh, it's probably north of a dozen different lakes. And I can tell the listeners, uh, I have never been to one that wasn't awesome. So, uh, you know, the, the beauty, the scenery, the fishing, uh, the complete disconnection from phones and email and technology and all of those things. Uh, and just, you know, to basically be alone with your friends or family and nature. And that's it. Um, it's just a, a truly unique Idaho fishing experience. And, um, you know, my weekend was awesome. And I, I hope uh, everyone gets a chance. You know, some some folks think that it's just a July, August thing. Uh, September is very viable, you know, for the most part, unless it gets really cold really quick, uh, which has not been my experience in any recent <laughs> memory here in Idaho. Yeah. Uh, September's a summer month, so uh, September's a great month to do it as well. It's kind of a back half of July, all of August, all of September, and then you might start getting into some stuff where it's a little too cold and, and uh, you know, maybe not viable anymore. But definitely still some time on the clock to uh, get a trip planned and get up there. You know, and it, and like I kind of teased in the opening there, it's, it's also one of my favorite things about fishing the Alpine Lakes is, and you're, you know, the possibility that you're always going to be alone is, is slim in Idaho because the fishing's so great. But you do have a lot greater opportunity to be alone. And uh, especially if you're willing to, to put in a mile or two, uh, I think back, I used to photograph waterfalls and um, my favorite waterfalls that were ones that were at least over a mile hike 
because I was generally by myself when I got to it. And I think it's the same thing with these Alpine lakes. The further in you can go, you're greatly increasing those odds of being alone. And I know that's what a lot of anglers like. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, in my case, it was about a three and a half mile hike each way. It was difficult. There was a lot of elevation gain, I think about 1,800 feet um, to get in there. And, and the last mile, honestly, was uh, pretty much straight up and then straight back down. And that's not uncommon, you know, to have uh, a lot of climbing and a lot of verticality. Um, so it does take some effort. It takes some planning. You know, my friends and I uh, spend a lot of time planning out our gear and what we're going to bring. Uh, there was one other uh, group at this lake, and that was it. Uh, and they were very nice, and it was not uh, an inconvenience at all to have them around, uh, almost comforting in a way. They had a dog, so, um, you know, in case any wild animals or anything, sure. which we did not encounter. But, yeah, it was very nice. And as far as the solitude goes, I, I know I've mentioned this on the show a handful of times. Um, gosh, if you're willing to to pack it, and I always am, because, <laughs> you know, fishing is high on the list of, of my priorities for what I want to do once we get up there. Um, I bring the float tube and oh, yeah. then your odds of having an entire lake basically to yourself are super high uh, because a lot of folks who come in, even if they bring a fishing rod, uh, don't necessarily bring the boat. So I had my float tube. I had access to the entire lake um, and it was just the best. Ooh, I hope you brought some of that uh, warm weather leggings, too, because that water had to be cold. 61 degrees. <laughs> so, yeah, not warm, not warm, but not not terrible. And I do have some insulated, like, tights, basically, that I wear for, for the float tube. Um, those, are, those were definitely nice to have on hand. But, you know, a little bit chilly, but it was nice weather for the most part, and you know, the fish were cooperative. I kept a couple fish each each night for dinner on the campfire. And uh, it's the beautiful West Slope cutthroats is uh, mm. was the majority of what I was catching. Um, and that's also like really the only place or one of the only places where you find those fish, too, is in these alpine lakes. So um, just so many reasons, too many that we, we, you know, we couldn't list them all on the show. But, um, you know, go and, and explore for yourself and you'll soon find uh, all the great reasons and probably some that are unique to you and you know what you like to do or what you try to get out of a fishing trip um, but it's just a, a wonderful place to to check out there's so many different areas to explore whether it's above McCall or above Cascade or up in the Sawtooth the Stanley area there's a handful over out of Idaho City um, and the list just goes on and on so no shortage I mean even the most avid of anglers with, uh, you know, millions of bucks in the bank and, and no day job or anything probably couldn't visit all of these in a lifetime. It's so just, many. Uh, there's, there's hundreds. So it's one of the things that makes Idaho such a great place to live and to fish and to be here. So, you know, and I, I know one of the things that many Alpine anglers are huge in is fly fishing up there, right? Um, and, uh, if you're a new to fly fishing and you want to learn a little bit more about it, you might have an opportunity if you hurry, uh, because my understanding is this class is filling up, but you have a class coming up on fly fishing and it's a pretty intense class. Yeah. It's one of the more popular ones. Um, people are, you know, super into all kinds of fishing here in Idaho, but fly fishing seems to have, uh, even more popularity to it. Um, so this class is called Learning to Fly. It's designed as basically an entry-level fly fishing class. So if you've never been fly fishing before, this is a great class for you. If you've done other types of fishing but have maybe only dabbled in the fly stuff, uh, this is a great class as well. And if your skills are just still kind of in that uh, beginner novice stage and you want to kind of take things to the next level, I would say this is a great class for that as well. We do some hands-on casting instruction with professional instructors. We're going to teach you the basics of uh, the mechanics of fly casting, which of course is one of the big hurdles to overcome is how do we, how do we operate this? It's a little more complicated than a 
than the old Snoopy push button reel or, <laughs> or even a, you know, even a spinning reel. So we go, we go over all that hands on uh, outdoors. And then we head inside and do the rest of the program. We're going to learn knot tying. We're going to learn the different types of flies, uh, strategies, locations, uh, all of the things that are included in most tight lines to a classes, but all geared and catered uh, very much to fly fishing. So it's a great class. It's a lot of fun. Uh, it's always super popular. And we are having that September 20th at the Hilton Garden Inn, Boise Spectrum. Participants will receive additional details on when and where we'll be meeting to do the fly casting portion, uh, which we do first before heading over to uh, to do the rest of the class. So again, that's September 20th, uh, 5.30 to 8.30 p.m. And it's open for registrations at tightlines208.com. And uh, as we record this, Jeff, we are about uh, getting close to halfway sold. So. Uh, and I do expect it to to get pretty full. It usually does. So uh, if you want to get in, don't delay. Go online and sign up for Learning to Fly, an intro to all things fly fishing in Idaho waters. That is awesome. Uh, that is actually one of your classes that I have circled. And, and just for some reason, it always ends up I'm out of town <laughs> during that class. And I'm going to be out of town again this year. But, man, I'm hoping next year I can get into that class because – um, much like you, I grew up a bass fisherman and so a uh, fly rod wasn't really a part of my repertoire. It was, you know, more of the heavy duty stuff. But, uh, one of these years I'm going to get into that class and, and I'd love to learn how I got a buddy of mine that loves to fly fish and he wants me to go with him. But, uh, make sure you check that out. Tightlines208.com. We have a link at our site, gemstatefishing.com. You can find it there as well. If you go to the links page, he is Jordan Rodriguez. Uh, you know, there's, uh, in, there's other ways to, to catch up with Jordan, uh, besides being an accomplished, uh, author. He, uh, does a lot of, uh, he's a journalist as well, but you can follow him on Instagram. What's your, uh, what's your handle there on the Instagram? Is that what they call it? Is that what the kids call it these days? Your handle on Insta? I think, I think it's an Instagram handle. Yeah. So okay. it's tight underscore lines 208. And uh, that's my Instagram. I got all sorts of stuff. I got my my most recent posts are from my trip in the Alpines. And, uh, you know, it's all fishing all the time on my page. So check that out. Sometimes I have goodies and giveaways and little tips and tricks and uh, information about classes and all those types of things. So uh, definitely a good follow if you're into fishing. Awesome. Well, he's Jordan Rodriguez. He joins us each and every week with a hot tip of the week. What you normally pay for, he comes here and gives you for free. Jordan, thanks for joining us. Hope you have a great week, and uh, hopefully we get that class filled up here uh, for you this week. We appreciate you coming on, talking about those alpine lakes, getting away, putting some miles in, and packing it out there and doing some fishing. We will see you next week, my friend. Likewise. Thanks, Jeff. All right. Thank you. Do you want to be part of the show? Email us with questions or your fishing report from your last trip. Email general questions to gemstatefishing208 at gmail.com. Fish pictures sent to myfish at gemstatefishing.com. And viewer questions to questions at gemstatefishing.com. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hit us up with those emails, man. We'd love to connect with you guys and gals and your anglers out there. Let us know what's happening. Show off those pictures as we end off this summer here. I uh, would love to see some of those from you. All right, let's look at the reservoir level and boat ramp information. I tell you guys and gals, it's looking really good still. Um, there's a couple of spots that are a little bit low, but for the most part, everything's pretty good. Magic Valley, uh, we'll start over there as we always do. Uh, the Lake Walcott is sitting at 94% full with an elevation of 42.44. The boat ramp is still open. Little Wood is sitting at 73% full with an elevation of 52.22. Little Wood boat ramp is still open. And Lake Milner, 74% full. And as always, I don't have any boat ramp information there. All right, Treasure Valley, uh, CJ Strike sitting at 100%, uh, 54 feet. So no issues there. 
CJ uh, Anderson Ranch, 86% full with an elevation of 4183. All boat ramps are open. Arrow Rocks, our first closure here in Arrow Rock. They are down to 21% full. Pretty typical this time of year. If you're uh, new to the show, you're new to fishing in this area, uh, generally Lucky Peak is later to fill uh, in the spring, and Arrow Rocks are first to get emptied in the fall. And so they are at 3116. The high water ramp is closed, ladies and gentlemen. Don't go there. Go to the low water ramp. Lucky Peak down just a touch at 97% full with an elevation of 3052. However, all ramps are open. Lake Lowell's also down this week, 56% full with an elevation of 2522. All ramps there are still open. All right, uh, over in Oahe, uh, the Oahe Reservoir is at 59% full with an elevation of 2644. All ramps are open. All right, let's take a drive up the windy road to the Cascade area. Cascade's currently sitting at 68% full with an elevation of 4819. We do have a second closure there now. All ramps are open except for French, French Creek and Buttercup. Buttercup is now closed. Deadwood sitting at 61% full with an elevation of 5312. Cozy Cove ramp is open. That's right, the Cozy Cove boat ramp is open. Man Creek all the way down to 36% full. Big drop there. However, the good news is at 28.50 rate eight, the both ramps are still open, so you don't have to worry about that. You can get in there and still do some fishing or recreating, if that's your desire, at Man Creek. All right, let's jump over to the Snake River Reservoir area. We're going to uh, look at Brownlee. That's the only one we get any reports on. Uh, their current water level is up actually just a little bit, if you can believe it, 2057.7. So up seven tenths a week this week. Everything is still open there. Uh, here's what you need to know for that area. Usable water depth and feet at the ramps. Uh, the two you need to most worry about right now is spring recreation boat ramp. There's only two usable feet. Stack Park only has four. And the only closest one after that is Holcomb Park. That's over on the uh, Oregon side. It has 10 feet. Everything else is pretty good. I will tell you that that health advisory uh, for the harmful algae has been lifted uh, from everything that I can see at the website there. So everything looks good over there for that. So you don't have to worry about that anymore. Uh, you're good to go there. Make sure you visit us at gymsafefishing.com for all the links to all the information we provide here. You can also contact us through the site. All right, it is time for our Idaho Fishing Game Report. I will tell you this, that uh, things tend to be slowing down this time of the year, and uh, it's no different with stocking uh, for fishing game. They also are slowing down just a little bit. And um, so they are there. That's really kind of, of come down just a touch for these guys uh, right now. The only thing I'm seeing the big one is over Magic Valley, Lake Cleveland, 3000 fish will be stocked over on the Southwest side. There's not a whole lot. There are several small ponds and rivers, uh, mainly the Boise river. Uh, I highly recommend that you just go and check that out and find out uh, for yourself. If your favorite, uh, if your favorite uh, pond or lake is being or river is being uh, stocked, again, not a whole lot of ponds or river or uh, uh, reservoirs or lakes being stocked there. What about those tournaments? We've got two going on this weekend. The Idaho Bassmasters Club tournament will be happening August 26th and August 27th. Uh, that's going to be happening at Lake Cascade. That's right, Lake Cascade. They'll be using all boat ramps, so just be aware of that as that's happening there this weekend. And then the only other one to report is at CJ Strike, and that's the Idaho Kayak Bass Fishing Tour event number four. That's on Saturday, August 26th. It's the only day, and uh, looks like Eastside Park is uh, is where they're launching from there against a kayak, so they won't be using a lot of boat ramps over there. So you don't have to worry about that too much. Uh, but you know, watch out for those anglers out there. And give them a little bit of uh, give them a little bit of right away there as they go fishing. Hey, you can find us on every social media platform from Facebook groups, Twitter, or Instagram. 
Our handle at Idaho underscore report. All right. Yeah, man. Give us a follow there, man. We'd love to see you guys and uh, love to have you jump on there with us and uh, let us uh, tell us everything about what you guys do. All right. It's time for that moon phase report. Let's jump right into that. Uh, I've been waiting for this one. This is going to be a good one, guys and gals. Uh, first quarter uh, was August 24th. Uh, so that'll be the, the Thursday. You're listening to this on Friday or later. The full moon is August 30th, and here's the good news. Perigee. Perigee is coming on August 30th as well, and so Apogee will be September 12th. We're next month into that, so it's going to be really good. Why am I excited about that? Well, at its closest position, Perigee, the moon is only about 233 miles away from the Earth. Now, a lot of theorists, including your uh, humble host here, feel that the moon's greater gravitational pull as much as 20% stronger during the perigee position means that salunar peaks at this time create even better fishing potential. Now, when it's at its closest, sometimes called supermoon, due to additional influence on tides. So, yeah, big, um, big, big week coming up next week uh, on Wednesday the 30th. You make sure that you're out there fishing on that. Let's talk about those peak times. It's going to be kind of rough over the weekend. Really, Friday, barely into the good. Just barely into the good, and that's 4 and 11 o'clock p.m. Saturday gets a little bit stronger, 10 a.m., 4 p.m., and 11 p.m. Again, a little bit stronger on Sunday, 10 a.m., 5.30, 11.30 p.m. Monday, we're looking at uh, your good times of noon and midnight, and then again at 6.30 p.m. To get off work on Monday, grab that rod and reel. Remember Jordan talked about that a couple of shows ago? You know, uh, just have that rod and reel ready to go. Get out there and do a little fishing. Tuesday, this is where it starts to get good, anglers. 1 a.m. and 1 p.m. is in the good. And then again at 7.30 p.m., right at the excellent. I mean, it's just, I almost gave it an excellent. I really did. I, I'm like, hmm, it's there, it's almost there. But I, I didn't want you to get too excited over that, so we're illuminating it good for right now. But here's what I am telling you. Good, again, on Wednesday at 2 a.m. If you're fishing at 2 a.m., man, uh, hit me on social media. Let me know. I'd love to I'd love to hear from you. Send me those 2 a.m. pictures. But 2 p.m. if you don't want to get up that early. And then your first excellent in a long time is at 8 o'clock. It's a great time to go fishing. Wednesday the 30th, excellent at 8 o'clock. Now listen to this. We've got three good excellence on Thursday, 3 a.m., 3 p.m., 8.30 p.m. Those are all excellent peaks. 8.30 is going to be your strongest one. So if you're picking a time and you're saying, man, this is the one day, Jeff, I got to get out. I got to get those, those, uh, those lines wet. I got to get in the water. And so I'm telling you guys, 8.30 on Thursday, get out there. Uh, and then you'll have a good at 8.30 a.m., Okay. Yes, that's right. Four, four good peak times. So that is your moon phase report uh, for this week. Oh yeah. What's my grade? Well, uh, you know, it's kind of like my math class and my communication class. Uh, my math class grade wasn't as good as my communication class, and the weekend's going to be the same thing. The weekend's going to be a C- minus uh, due to the chance of some rain in some areas, but mostly just because of the poor fishing forecast. I mean, everything, like I said, you start on Friday, barely into the good, barely into the good, just like, just, hey, I'm here. Uh, but other than that, man, over the weekend, I just don't know. I just don't know if it's going to be that great. I'm going to give it a C-. minus. Uh, you got out there, you proved me wrong. Send me some pictures, and uh, we'd love to see them there. Um, now, here's what's going to get good. Starting on Monday, it's just going to get much better every single day. And by Thursday, Thursday, it's going to shoot up to an A+. plus. That's right, an A+. plus. Man, we're going to give out an A+. plus Wednesday, Thursday, for sure. You want to get out there, and you want to be fishing, and you want to check that out. So that is our grade for the week.
All right. Well, man, the end of another show. Uh, I'm excited. The, uh, the, the weather over the weekend's not going to be great. I got it. You know, we got that. We figured it out. It's not going to be great over the weekend, but it's going to be great next week. Um, so especially Wednesday, Thursday, we're going to see some really great stuff. Appreciate you guys coming along and, uh, being here with us. But, uh, before we get too much further along, we got to make sure that we, uh, we get those sponsor spade and our main sponsor, of course, is the good boy studios. And if you've ever had an idea for a great podcast, much like the Idaho fishing report, I know I'm biased, uh, but you just don't know how to get it started. Well, starting your own podcast is easy contacting good boy studios and letting them help you get your great idea out of your noggin and into your listeners ears they could teach you how to write edit produce and publish your own podcast or and this is the best part they can handle all of those tasks and all you have to do is show up to record so contact them today to learn more at goodboystudios.com that's good b-o-i studios.com good boy studios can help launch your idea into a reality. So big, yeah, big shout out to Good Boy Studios. They help us get this show on each and every week. Um, yeah, well, guess what, guys? That's it. It's a wrap. A uh, big shout out again to uh, Jordan Rodriguez coming in and talking about those Alpine lakes. If you haven't experienced them, get out there. If you have, uh, send us some pictures. You know, we love to see those pictures, and uh, you can send those through the email. We'd love to have those to you. That, uh, that's Jim State Fishing at Gmail. Uh, Jim State Fishing 208 at, gym, at uh, gmail.com. Check us out there. Send us your emails. Want to thank you all for coming along. Couldn't do this show without you. You're amazing, amazing listeners. Uh, if you're listening to this on your favorite podcast platform, I highly recommend you go to YouTube and check us out. We have our own YouTube channel. Like and subscribe. That's the best way you can sh support the show. You can support us through Patreon if you desire to, if you want to dip into those pockets a little bit. A um, couple of things we want to wrap up here. Make sure you go and check out Treasure Valley Roller Derby. They're playing at the Idaho Central Credit Union Arena downtown. I will be this Friday at Homedale. I will be announcing the varsity football game there Friday night. Super excited for that. They're coming off the championship game. They lost by five points last year. But they're back stronger than ever in this brand new stadium out there. So if you're in the Homedale area on Friday night, come check out the varsity. Saturday night, you can find me at the uh, Idaho Central Credit Union doing roller derby. Sunday, if you want to find me, well, you better be on the water because that's where I plan on being. And that is going to put an end to our show. We appreciate you guys coming along. I'm Jeff Cullors. And I'll see you on the water. We would like to thank you for listening to the Idaho Fishing Report. You can find us at gemstatefishing.com. Also, connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You can also find us on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe and give us a like. Thanks to our sponsors, guests, and experts, but especially you, our listener, for making this show possible. This has been a Good Boy Studios production in association with OMS Multimedia, LLC. Join us next week for another episode of the Idaho Fishing Report. This show is a property of Old Man Studios, LLC. It may not be reproduced, rebroadcast, or retransmitted without the express written consent of Old Man Studios, LLC.